when you were on the moon, you were only there for a short time, about what, 12 hours, 8 hours, something like that? No, we landed and lifted off 20, 21 hours later, 20 we hours were outside, later. two, two and a half hours, okay. a very, very short period of time, because it was an early spacecraft, it was heavier, mm -hmm. as most things are early in the production, than the, than the later spacecraft. We had put in more conservatism, so we only had the consumables, the oxygen supply, to stay there one day and to go outside for a, a, a short period of time, two and a half hours was all the allotment was for. As the lunar module was uh, was being landed, the the spot where you were going to land was not was not working. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't going to work out. Is uh, can you tell me how you had what thirty seconds extra of fuel? Is that what thirty seconds of fuel to spare as you were landing? Is that can you talk probably about probably the initial calculation was that if everything went right, we would probably have a minute and a half, something like like that. But where the uh, computer was taking us in this supposedly very smooth area uh, was uh, n not acceptable to Neil. He was looking outside. I was feeding him all the information I possibly could from the primary guidance uh, computer and the uh, abort guidance and all the systems that were uh, necessary to support the propulsion and, and, uh, and the landing. So uh, occasionally I would sneak a peek out there, but uh, I was not controlling the <laughs> spacecraft. Right. Uh, he certainly was in directing it, uh, and we decided to extend where we're going to, f to smoothly fly over the undesirable spot. Uh, so we saw a shadow and saw the dust being blowing off to the sides, and we touched down. Uh, and I said, contact light, uh, engine stop, so we stopped the engine and did a few cleaning up the cockpit, uh, is what, uh, what pilots call it. Uh, they may make a quick post-landing check, mm -hmm. and we make sure that we don't have to lift off immediately because Mike Collins in Columbia is going overhead, and, uh, and if we have to leave, we have to leave quickly to catch him before he's too far uh, gone, and uh, then we have to wait for two hours. Uh, until he comes around I again. See. Okay. Uh, 21 hours later, when it was time to fire the rocket to leave the moon, mm -hmm. there had to have been some anxiety. Is this going to work? Because if it didn't work, there wasn't a whole lot that they could do. Was there some anxiety about whether it would start up again? Um, I, I don't think we use the term anxiety. We we term use the term. Uh, peaked alertness. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're we're really alert to what's going on and hopefully it's a it's a smooth countdown and nothing uh, comes up that uh, interrupts and nothing did mm -hmm. and we lift it off uh, and uh, we we sort of expected at the pitch over that it might be a little disconcerting because it was a fairly rapid pitch over maneuver but but we were thrusting at a little bit less than earth gravity but that's about five times uh, what Moon was pulling us down. So we left in a big hurry, uh, and uh, and it was not at all disturbing the fact that we pitched over. <laughs> so there was no cheering going on uh, until we're back on the ocean, and of course the spacecraft, uh, uh, unexpectedly to us, but uh, but it's a it's a natural thing. It can do that. It it turned over upside oh, down. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's getting pretty warm inside because the heat shield is not being cooled by the uh, right. by the Pacific Ocean, and uh, so we're hanging from the shoulder straps, bouncing around upside and, down. And this is not the time you want to get seasick. You know, you just completed a a, a great mission. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> Things uh, worked out okay though. We got on the carrier with our I isolation garments and started a quarantine that uh, lasted. Uh, another 15 days or so. Quarantine because people didn't know if you would catch any, I don't know, viruses or bacteria or whatever on the moon and bring it back to Earth. Um, have you ever figured out, one of the interesting things in your book is you said that for 40 years people want to come up to you and tell you, Buzz, here's where I was when you landed on the moon. Have you ever figured out why people want to tell you where they were when you la when you landed on the moon? Well, sure, it's natural. Uh, uh, it's it's a celebration of a, of a positive uh, event in in history in the nation, and they've felt a part of it, mm -hmm. and and uh, their part of it. They knew where we were, so they want to just uh, get a little closer to the event by telling us where 
they were because that sticks in their mind exactly Absolutely. where they were. I think I was six and mom and dad woke me up so my brother and I could watch it and of mm -hmm. course we'll never forget it. Uh, a lot of people listening to the radio on KDWB right now might not realize that you are the original Moon Man from MTV. So when the MTV Music Awards hands out that trophy, yeah. that's you. Well, they called it the Buzzy, uh, yeah. just, just to make sure. It's kind of like uh, Buzz Lightyear. You know, they that's don't, you they don't too. come and ask you and give you a contract. Well, we're going to pay you this <laughs> this amount, where we would like to use your names. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so you didn't make a dime off of no, Buzz, Buzz Lightyear. I, I still make make do best I can on Air Force retirement. Okay. There's <laughs> not a whole lot. Buzz, it's been such a pleasure to meet you and talk to you. Of course. A real right. honor. Yeah. I appreciate well, it. Pleasure being here in Minneapolis, sharing my story with a lot of people. Magnificent Desolation is, uh, I think, one of the, the better efforts that I've come up with uh, in the way of a book. I've written seven, eight different books, a couple of children's books are doing very well. And, of course, I got involved in a rap session with uh, Snoop Dogg, thanks to uh, people advising me, because uh, I really do want to communicate with, uh, with the younger generation, sure. the people going through uh, school. Uh, so I uh, Twitter occasionally uh, with The Real Buzz. Is that your handle? The, the Real Buzz? Twitter at The Real Buzz, yes. Okay, got it. Buzz, thank you so much. It's been an honor. The book is awesome. I read the book in about two or three days. Loved it, and uh, it was also great learning about your uh, your wife Lois and um, and everything that you've gone through since you came back from the moon. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a eventful life, a challenging life, and a very satisfying one. Coming from desolation, somewhat back into degrees of magnificence of being able to serve my country. That's what pleases me. Absolutely. Thank you.